doctor and we don't have any signal so I can't watch YouTube can't do none of that but do you ever like my thing is like cutting a dirt road but driving down the road and you get to thinking and you're like what am I doing in my life what do I want where do I want to see myself what are my goals um, have I like lost focus have I lost myself y'all excuse my hair I got the windows down I'll fix it when I get there so I'm just sitting there thinking and I was like when I get home I'm going to get my bedroom back together. I've got my bedroom tore apart because I ripped up all the carpet and I'm putting down hardwood floors in it and painting my walls. But it's like I started it, but I haven't finished it. In one mile, turn left onto Highway 917. And I'm just, I guess I'm just in one of those rambling moods. I don't know. And just had so much go on in the last year I just feel like flipping the hell out to be honest I just I don't know and I can't do that I mean when I was younger you know I damn me and my best friend grab a case of beer hit a dirt road and <clears throat> hell go fight down a damn dirt road with somebody and you know you get it out I'd be good but can't do that anymore um, turn left onto highway first of all things aren't like they used to be back in the day second of all you used to take an ass whooping or give an ass whooping and go on about your business but in eight miles it's not turn like left that onto anymore East Proctor Street third I got kids so I can't just haul ass and leave them. So you have to find a, you know, a middle median. How do you cope? What do you do? And I mean, it's no surprise. It's nothing that I don't know, but over this past year, I have literally just lost myself. It hasn't been just a year. It, this past year has been really, really rough. That's no doubt about it. But just over the past four years, you know, you're so used, you have that routine. You go to work, you come home. First thing you do, you know, homework with the kids, fix them a snack. Then, you know, any activities, whether it be football, baseball, softball, soccer, whatever they're doing, you do that. Then you come home, clean house, wash clothes, and you cook supper. Then I'm used to Chad, you know, coming in about that time. Then by the time you get that done, it's time to get the kids washed. And I'm talking five kids now. Get the kids washed, make sure their clothes are picked out for school tomorrow. Then, you know, you wake up the next morning, you got to get up before they do. Get them up. I always try to keep them quiet so they didn't wake him up. You know, take them to school. All that's gone now. Yeah, I still got my two at home, but it's totally different. I mean, how do you cook for only three people? They're older now. They don't need help with homework. Very seldom do they. It's like my whole life has changed. My whole routine has changed. And I always, you know, base my life or my life revolved around somebody else. It was never about me. You know, I always put everyone before me. I was always doing for everybody else. So, now that I don't have that to do, Chad's not here. You know, the other three kids, I had them by myself for like a year. They're not here. I'm lost. You know, I don't know what to do. So then you go into a deep, deep depression 
lose yourself. Um, you know, we were in the process of saving up to get a new house. Uh, you know, paying off credit cards, paying off our vehicles. Yeah, I went ahead and, you know, got the credit cards paid off. I got the vehicles paid off. But, I can't take on, you know, another house payment by myself. Uh, luckily, you know, the house that I do have, it is paid for. But it needs some work done to it. He's not here to do the work. And y'all, trying to find somebody that you can trust and reliable, I have been through it, man. Trying to get repairs done to this house. And that just comes with owning a house or stuff that tears up that you have to get fixed. That is a luxury with renting, you know. You don't have to worry about that. And I get so just frustrated and overwhelmed and aggravated. Sometimes I feel like I just want to get in the car and drive and drive and drive until I can't drive no more. And I think that could, you know, have a lot to do with it. Yeah, you know, my number one priority is being a mom. But you also need me time. Um, I couldn't tell you the last time I've been anywhere uh, for just myself without my kids. And that's okay too, you know what I mean? They don't have anybody but me, but I've got to keep myself well in order to take care of them. And I, I'm, I'm not, I, I know that, I know I'm not. Um, I guess it's just a matter of, it's mind over matter pretty much, me making up my mind and saying, you know, pulling myself digging myself out the hole that I buried myself in. Um, I was always very spontaneous, outgoing, never stayed home, um, you know, always doing something. I didn't care what it was. We were just always on the go, 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 go. And now I hate to even, I don't like going in public at all. Uh, I don't like going in the grocery store. I do my shopping online. I just, I don't want to go anywhere. I just stay within, you know, besides working, stay within the four walls in my bedroom. And it's not helping at all. So. I think I may need to go back on my antidepressants, which I'm on the way to the doctor. So I'm talking, y'all, I'm seeing a new doctor and it's aggravating. I hate, you know, going to a new doctor they don't know anything they look at you like you're crazy and they don't know your history where you know some of my other doctor my previous doctor did and I'm not somebody to open up about my personal business to other people that's just not me and I've always been the rock for other people yeah that was me you know I everybody come to me for advice I you know take on their problems but for me to put my problems on somebody else mm -mm. for me to tell somebody else how I'm feeling no I've always been that way um, getting those moods where I cry about it write about it listen In to music mile, turn left on Denise Proctor Street and then you know go on that like nothing happened It's just, I guess I can get on here and ramble about it. You know, there's, which is very different for me also. Um, you know, I, like I said, I've never been one to let my feelings out, let them be known. And I know there's, you know, look, I know what I think on my worst day is not a drop in the barrel to some people. You know, I know there are people out there that have it a lot worse than I'm even on my worst day that I think I have it. I know that. And I don't like pity. I don't like sympathy. It's not that. I don't, I don't even like people to check up on me. I don't know. I guess I'm just weird. But there comes a time too, you know, where you can admit I'm not happy. You know, I'm miserable on a day-to-day -day basis being miserable but why 
what is making me miserable and that's a good question the only thing I could say I'm not myself I don't know I'm not me what happened to me where am I at cause this sure ain't me Turn left onto East Proctor Street, then turn right onto South Main Street. Yes, I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm not me. That is definitely uh, for sure. So I guess it's just a matter of figuring out, you know, how do I find myself again? In a quarter mile, turn left onto East Not Street. only, you know, inside, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, but physically. I'm not me on the outside either. Um, and you know I think that has a lot to do with the depression I've been through of course when you get depressed what do you do you gain weight so in 450 feet turn right onto South Main Street I think I keep saying I think I keep saying I'm going to do it but it's just turn right onto South Main Street mind over matter I have to put it in my mind and nothing else matter my gym membership, it, it com it's For coming out my miles. bank every day. Continue on South Main Street. That's something I used to get up and bef uh, go to the gym every morning before I go to work. And that became like an addiction. That's something I think that I need to get back into again. And I think once you start feeling bad physically, then of course, you know, it's gonna have repercussions of feeling bad emotionally. Y'all, I don't even know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't know, I guess I just needed to talk to myself. That's, I mean, I don't have time for myself. I don't even have time to think, much less process how I'm feeling, to be honest. And, you know, I have my kids, but I don't wanna put that burden on them. I, I don't. It's not their responsibility. They shouldn't have to worry about it. You know, mama's supposed to be okay no matter what. And that's what I want them to think. That's how I want them to feel. No matter if it's in my darkest of the darkest days. I don't want them to be able to look at me and be able to tell anything's wrong. Um, I don't let them see me cry. It's crying has come like a daily thing and I don't think you know a lot of people say uh, crying is a sign of weakness no when I get mad I cry and I think that's what it is I'm just mad and frustrated and that's how I express it because what else can I do nothing something stupid I'm not gonna do that and I've always turned to drugs to mask those feelings so I didn't have to deal with them. I'm not going to do that. Drinking, I used to do that. Not going to do that. So, that's how I've been dealing with it. But, I want to get back in the gym. Going to the gym every day. When you start, you know, your day off with a workout feel productive, you feel like you've done something, you've accomplished something. My house is a pure mess. It drives me crazy. I've always had a spotless house, but when I, you know, I got sick with cancer and then got through that and broke my ankle and, you know, my children can only do so much. There is nobody but them. I don't have any family. Chad's locked up. Um, you know, I can't put all that responsibility on them. And it's like, out of sight, out of mind. You know what I mean? If I don't have to look at it, it's not there. But I can't be like that. I need to go through everything, clean it out, get it out my house. And now that, you know, it's cooled off some too, I think I can get that done. Ain't no thing. I've got to. And that's the thing. I've just got to put it in my head. Put it in my mind. This is what I'm going to do. So, I think what I'm going to do. But I get 
so overwhelmed. You know, my mind goes 100 miles an hour. I need to do this, 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 this. Then I get overwhelmed with it. It's too much. So what I need to do is write a list, you know, for each day, two or three things to target to get done. Instead of, you know, trying to do, get overwhelmed like I do. And then I'm just like, frig it. Frig it. Just forget it. And that's what I've been doing. I get so frustrated. I'm just, forget it. So, I don't know. Y'all, and that's the thing. A lot of people can look like, you know, they may look one way on the outside and seem this way. But in the inside, you never know what that person's thinking. You never know what they're feeling. You don't know what they're going through. So, have a little bit of compassion. And I try to every day. I've always been told that I was just a bitch. A real bitch. You don't care if what you say hurts people's feelings. No, it's not that. I mean, it's not that at all. I do have compassion for other people. But I'm not going to fake it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to tell you something that's not true just to make you feel good. No. So... I don't know, y'all. I'm just venting and rambling while I'm just going to this doctor. Just because I can. And I really haven't been writing either. Um, I don't want to take the time to sit down and write. And that's usually how I express, you know, my feelings. It's through writing, journaling. And I used to, you know listen to music a lot. I don't even know if y'all can hear me with all the wind that's blowing. Look at that highlight though. What? Um, I used to listen to music a lot and I don't even listen to music no more. But it'll be alright. I'll be alright. I've just got to pull, dig my way out of this deep hole. And I'm not that's the thing. I'm just letting it get it deeper and deeper and deeper. I've got to get myself out of it, y'all. I've got to. I've got to have some accountability and pull myself out of it. I've cut off, you know, all, which I'm starting more. Um, I've cut off communication, you know, with my friends and everything. I just became secluded, isolated. It's what I did. I isolated myself from the world. And I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, Chad being in prison. Uh, I mean, come on, he's a man. He's in prison. He's, of course he thinks I'm running around on him cheating, this and that. And, you know, I just kind of isolated myself from the world. And that's not me. I've always been a spontaneous, outgoing. I'm, you know, I'm not very talkative or anything like that. I'm actually a very quiet person unless I got something to say. But, um... I, I've always lived life on the go. Always. You know, I haven't took the kids to the pumpkin patch yet. In which they're getting older, so, you know, things are changing. The activities they want to do are changing. They don't want to do the same things. That's just like they said they didn't want to go trick-or-treating this year. Okay, so I'm used to doing costumes. And they've always had homemade costumes. And, you know, planning out what they're going to do for Halloween night. Now, you know, they don't even want to do that. So, I guess it, I'm just adjusting in life all the way around. I've got teenagers now, and they're not babies anymore, and it sucks. It's like Chad called today. That's why I was late before I started my live stream. He called me. And, of course, I got emotional, and I was crying, and then you know I cuss him out and take it out on him and you know he's going through enough in there no doubt no doubt in my mind he's going through enough but then you know I'm like you don't understand what I'm going through and he doesn't I mean no one will until you you know walk in those shoes he can say he does but he doesn't I mean I'm not saying that he has it easy by any means but I don't know. It's frustrating. 
and like I told him, you know, I was like, who can I turn to? There is no one because he's not here. I can't just pick up the phone when I'm losing my shit, flipping out and call him. I can't. call me. I mean, like you said, I don't have anybody but you. Yeah, but you have me. I don't have that. And that's my fault because I've isolated myself from everybody. But then again, I'm like, you know, they don't understand. They're, they haven't been through it. Which is, you know, that's not fair to me to say to them because, you know, the friends that I do have in my life, I mean, there's a couple of them, you know, I could go a year, two years, and I have. I've gone, you know, without talking to them that long. But if I, you know, there was a situation when I needed her, I called her. And I was like, hey, you know, this is what's happened. I need you to get my kids. Da, 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 da. And, you know, she's always there. It's not that I don't have people in my life. I know I do. But I'm not that person to reach out to them, if that makes sense. tell the truth I mean I am good you know I don't want anybody to worry but I don't know y'all uh, I'm almost there so I will finish this uh, when I get done all right y'all I've got out the daughter now let's see if I can rush to get the hunter in time which I seriously doubt it but anyways like I was saying I guess I just needed to vent, and when you get to that point, it's just, I've lost myself, and got to find myself again, and it's not easy doing that, uh, while I was sitting in the doctor's office, I see the little, uh, debut, uh, video came out for the Dr. Phil show, so, uh, <laughs> once that airs, then I'll, uh, be able to talk about that but um you know there's things that i signed and this and that where can't be talked about right now i did watch uh sean's uh tomahawk sean's video and you know uh, out of all the shit storm i mean you know i'm sorry your kids come first man the and it doesn't miles. matter Continue on Highway. That's his biological child or not. I mean, you know, like you said, he's been with her since she was eight years old. Um, you know, Chad's been in my children's life. You know, their daddy passed away in 2010, and he's been there since 2011. Uh, do they know who their daddy is? Of course they do. Uh, it just so happens they have the same name. They're both named Chad. But they do call him daddy. Um... So, you know, it is what it is, and I would never, you know, honestly and truly, I think if we were to separate, uh, my son would go with him. <laughs> Doesn't matter, you know, that's what, I'm, money can't buy love. You cannot buy someone's love, but I guess, you know, that's just that father figure he has that connection with. It's like, you know, Chad can do no wrong in his eyes. And Haley was the same way about her daddy. Well, they both had the same daddy, but her biological daddy when she was his age, you know he could do no wrong and it is what it is but so I'm gonna think when I get home tonight um, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna write me out some goals uh, you know I know what my long-term goals are but you know a lot of them there's some of them that I can achieve until Chad gets home you know what I mean I've already, you know, I went to school, I got my degree, but, um, I want to, um, kind of what I want to do, which I'll talk about, you know, in another vlog, you know, he wants to be involved in that also, you know, it'd be a team effort, um, I would like to open up some, um, they're called Oxford Houses, um, here. Because once you come out of jail, 
or prison or rehab or whatever you know there we don't have the resources for a person to transition you know to get back on their feet you're just thrown out there you know what I mean it was pretty much nothing and if you don't have a support system or a family to help you you're screwed and he has nobody but me and you know if I wasn't there I really don't know what he would do so you know that's something that I've looked into since he's been incarcerated and that's something that I really want to do is open up you know an Oxford house for men and women um, especially women um, there's not anything here there is one halfway house here in uh, Horry County but it is through the um, there's a program at Jerry Ben Long that's called uh, Life Recovery or New Life Recovery, something like that, where they go through this program and then, you know, they're released into this halfway house and then they transition over. But that's for men only. That's not, you know, for women. And, you know, a lot of women have children. And, you know, I've looked up the guidelines and this and that, and, you know, they can have their children there with them. So want to do that and there's a couple other things you know that I want to do and um, yeah so but more of my short term you know goals is just pulling myself out of this depression which uh, man I got to call that doctor he didn't even write me my thyroid medicine that y'all is always something I've got to get to Charleston and get with my um, specialists up there it's time for a PET scan and all that mess it's just always something always something um, but anyways I'm gonna cut this off and um, I hope you have a good day I know it's just me a bunch of rambling and blah 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 but I guess sometimes you know that's just what you got to do I was driving through the country and yeah that's always kind of how I've done it but I would have a Bud Light in my hand or wait back, back, back in the day, a bowl or a blunt. And, you know, those days are over. You change and you mold. And so I just get on here and ramble to y'all. Which, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, you know, that can relate or going through the same things or what have you. You know, you just got to center myself again, pretty much. And, um find me I poured my heart and soul into other people and lost me along the way so but don't worry I'm good I'm good I just you know I just want to get back to feeling good about myself again and get out this depression and yada 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 anyways love you guys um look at this hair my gracious uh I'll probably have a live stream tonight. Um, can't wait till Friday. Yeah, it's going to be hilarious. Anyway, and just like Yava said on Twitter, uh, she may get a little bit of fame off of this, but she'll always be YouTube dirt. We know what she is, who she is, what she's about, so it is what it is. <laughs> But, y'all, the thing is, well, after it airs, I'll talk about it. I gotta hush. But, anyways, love y'all. Remember, too blessed to be stressed. And I will see y'all later.